We've got a tidy 50,000 mile E46 M3 in at the moment for um, uh, effectively a new inner arch. It had um, corrosion on the outside just where the bumper joins in. The bumper's off at the moment, but that's where the bumper would sit. Had typical sort of corrosion seeping through, which when we traced back underneath that bumper mount clip, which some of them have, was quite poor and that had seeped uh, into the two layer panel here where the outer wing touches the inner wing and then we don't think it's actually come from that position but we found quite a lot of corrosion as you can see in the inner arch so that's not the wing the outer wing panel is that green coated one that I'm touching there this is the inner wing where your wheel would sit so the axle is now removed so I'm stood where the axle would be on this vehicle and you can see the extreme amount of corrosion which are almost on by touching just sort of falls to pieces the sealer looks very good there but it's all creeped underneath the factory seam sealer and left the inner arch in effectively pieces so um, it's borderline MOT failure because of sharp edges, although it's not actually on the wheel arch itself. It's extremely poor and obviously on a 50,000 mile M3, uh, customer obviously wants this rectified. And rather than cutting a panel or patch out, which will always show as a, a bead weld line, which is hard to hide and then uh, people will ask questions about accident damage later in life. We've done the proper method by ordering the BMW repair panel, so the inner wheel arches and we're going to uh, replace the entire item. So we're just taking the seam sealer off here, off of the lines where we know the joins are. We're gonna do a method from inside and outside. The car is fully prepped, there's nothing inside, totally bare. Same with underneath. No axle, no fuel tank. So we're all safe to be cut in, weld in. The car is protected inside and we can now start removing this damaged panel. Old wheel arch uh, panel is fully cut out now. We've prepped out a new one and got, um, got a new one fully metal prepped. So it's got a zinc phosphor coat on the metal now and also uh, a weld through etch primer just so that we don't leave any bare metal there. This will get coated with pore 15 and wax obviously before it goes away. And that's our repair section panel. A genuine BMW panel cut down to size. So we've got the replacement panel in position that we're happy with. Like I say, no corrosion from the previous video. Well, through primer throughout uh, lineup, we're happy with. And the addition to uh, just tidy up the fold of the of the inner arch, and then we're going to start the uh, the proper full welding process. And then we're going to use uh, a heat shield. Um, gel on the outside paintwork, although the paint is being, well, the, the tire is being painted basically, so it's not a problem. But we're just going to put this on and see uh, see how well it does to stop the heat soak into the paintwork. That's what the gel looks like. This is on the arch. Uh, that bit there isn't burned through. That's just where we're tackling some corrosion in that area ourselves. So it's all around the arch. Like I say, it doesn't matter if it burns, but we're going to see, because the car's been painted, but we're just going to see how well this does. Well, the plug welds are done on the inside, and uh, there's hardly any paint damage. A little bit of distortion up in the corner. And the, uh, the heat shield gel has just sort of um, treated where the heat was. I think the only slight pickle I think I saw was somewhere around this plug weld here on this painter. So yeah, all in all, it's a very good product. So we're prepping the, uh, the shell now for the new panel. And whilst we've got the quarter panel lip folded out to remove the old panel, we use that to our advantage to not only check inside, but also use this Pour 15 metal prep, which neutralizes any corrosion that was in there and uh, coats it with a zinc phosphor finish and gives it a good etch before the rust preventative paint goes on by pour 15. So that's what we're doing now so that we know that there's no corrosion left in the lip.
So we've washed off the metal prep with damp, warm cloth, and, uh, and now we're just drying the areas out with our infrared lights. And I'll probably leave these on over an hour, get these panels very warm so that we know any uh, moisture has evaporated and we're not going to trap anything in the seams. This is the completed side so far. You can just see our join line there and the edge of the inner panel. And we're drying this out with infrared light so that the gap between the two panels, we can be sure that there's no moisture trapped in there before we apply the rust preventative paint. Uh, the factory panels are like this as well. There's always a gap which they spray um, seam sealer in at a high pressure to fill that line, which is what we'll do before we finish. So our new panel's fully prepped and bare metal in the areas we need to weld to and uh, weld through primer has been applied on the back and the front and that's just drying now under the infrared light. And if we look at the vehicle, we have that prepped with weld through primer and that's just drying now in infrared lights before we start the welding process. So right hand side repairs are fully done now. New inner arch panel welded, uh, cleaned and just going through the metal prep process at the moment, which is why it's wet. And then we'll wash that off before applying the um, Pour 15 rust preventative paint. We've now used the Pour 15 rust preventative paint, two coats of this, uh, to thoroughly coat um, all the bare metal and all the seams and fill any joins where the two panels lip round on the U section. Uh, and then that's been scotch brought down and then this is the high build primer now, which is like a matte black finish. This is a high build primer. And then once that's dry, that's scotch brighted down. So then we can then start our two stage sprayable seam sealer process. So first of all, we do a sprayable seam sealer, a fairly low volume, but high pressure, um, just on the welded lines or seam lips or any panel joins to make sure that we can get a good seal on the, uh, on the joins and panel gaps and then we'll do an overall second run with the sprayable seam sealer in a thicker content um, to generally cover all the metal to then try and match the BMW factory sealer as best as possible. What I'm doing now is the messy stage of um, uh, staged layers of building up the sprayable seam sealer because it's a U-channel lip and there's absolutely no room for a sprayable seam sealer to be poking up from this side facing down into the lip. We have to spray uh, as best as can into the lip and then scrape uh, with a brush into the lip to fill the channel up. What we're trying to do is build the channel up full of sealer because we know there's no corrosion in it because we've done obviously the repairs and work. We're now filling it up so that mud and water cannot sit in that channel. It will just bead off of the sealer once painted. So this is the messy stage of building it up in layers and, and brushing the sealer into the into the um, into the channel and if we go to the left hand side we've got a bit better an idea what we're talking about so filling that channel up and then giving it a textured finish underneath and then we still need to do a final pass on this one uh, to give it a texture what we're after over this sort of area we finished filling the U channel now and we've wiped clean the excess off of the uh, the outside of the channel because we'll do a thin sprayable textured finish on that so we've filled up the void so again water and mud can't sit in there now and they will just uh, sort of wash out or um, <clears throat> but basically not sit in there so normally we would do the rest of it all in one pass but we're doing this in multi stages because it's a high pressure sprayable seam sealer um, if we now try and coat the rest of it, it's going to push and upset this, which is curing. So we're going to leave this 24 hours to cure and then finish off with the rest of it. The sprayable seam sealer has now had 24 hours to dry and, um, and, and it's all cured. Happy with the results. I've pretty much lost the join line, which was around about there in the middle of the screen. And we've obviously seamed the lips in the U-channel and then on this uh, back channel here as well so that water and mud shouldn't sit, it's like the seal is sloped so hopefully it should just slide back off. And that's the finished product, so it's uh, now silver grey AO8 to match the rest of the underside which we did uh, 
earlier this year and now it's just been lacquered, it's just drying and, um, and now we can start rebuilding the fuel tank and the axle components and then uh, have the exterior arches of the car painted.